Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 346. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, all my good buddies out there. It's a beautiful day here in the Ozarks, and I've been thinking a lot about planting a garden and considering what they're saying, guys. We all better be planting gardens. <laughs> yeah, we are literally watching a planned shortage. Yeah, this this is all on purpose. I mean, it's it's right along with their agenda, and um, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna get away. And I I've never thought we were gonna get away without great inflation, um, and I and we're seeing that. I saw a report this week that said um, by the end of this year, the food's gonna increase fifty percent over what it is right now, and then double over the next few years. And I don't doubt that because I've, I've been watching the prices. And, and they're doing what they used to do uh, to try to make it look like it's not raising so much. They're shrinking the packages, leaving the price the same, shrinking the packages. All these days you're going to go get a bag of potato chips and there's going to be three potato chips in it. Well, the good news is, uh, especially if you're here in the Ozarks, is we've got lots of rain. Um, it's looking like this is going to be a good planting season. I know that they had tons of hay last year and so there will be a, an abundance of that you know i was thinking about um things that i could recommend to you guys and i don't think that there's anything that's not on the internet <laughs> you know you can just look up on how to raise your own food there's there are books that tell you how you can have animals and sustain your family on a fourth of an acre and so you know the info is out there if you're interested in it but i i do think that I, I've thought for a long time it's a good thing to have gardens because they're doing so much to the food. You know, um, I just I think the way that we're going to have clean, healthy foods, we're going to raise it on our own. Or it In this area, we've got a little leeway because they have such wonderful farmer's markets. And we know people personally, and we know that they don't put any chemicals on the food that they raise. And... It's very economical. You know, it's not uncommon, especially at the end of the season. You just go get a couple of big yeah. boxes of tomatoes for next to nothing if you want to make, you know, canned salsa or things like that. And I do think, um, you know, I've mentioned this before, I think we need to learn how to can. I know how to do the water bath, but I've never canned with the pressure cooker. And if you're going to can meat, um, certain things, you got to have, you know, the pressure to keep it safe. And so I'm going to learn that. And uh, it's you know we've got a perfect place in our basement where we could store canned goods, and uh, I had it filled up one year with apples, um, apple butter, and salsa and th- pickles that I'd made, and I'd just been busy the last few years and haven't put a lot of effort into it. But I'm going to this year uh, because of the the prices, and and I'm going to try to go ahead and and uh, fix things that I can store so we can have it for. The conferences. Oh, absolutely. You know, and when you look at the news, there's every once in a while you just catch bits and pieces that will uh, help you put things together. There was an interview with the um, person that's the head of the uh, Department of Energy. And in the interview, she said, well, we're, we're dialing back purposely on, on petroleum so that we can ease everybody into uh, electric and, and <laughs> wean you off. Well, that's, that's going to cause petroleum. That, I mean, they shut down a lot of the pipelines. They've done a lot of things to... Uh, curtail that here in America, uh, and you know, of course that also they've uh, slowed down. To, I think one of the pipelines was was natural gas rather than petroleum, if I'm remembering right. And uh, these, all these things have ripple effects that they don't they don't understand. We really don't have the technology right now for completely electric. Uh, I saw a report the other day. Uh, Randy mentioned it to me, and so I looked it up. Uh, the ion lithium batteries that you need for a uh, vehicle, uh-huh. and as many of them as you need. Uh, ion lithium is a very messy uh, thing to mine. They almost strip mine uh, when they when they mine it. So there's actually a lot of ecological damage done, but it takes more energy 
to mine and produce and to build the batteries than the car would expend in gas in the entire lifetime of the car. And so this whole thing is really a fallacy that uh, I've been waiting for graphene batteries to come out. And I know the technologies out there. There's uh, MIT. They have found a way to create a buffer to where it works properly. That with a graphene battery on one charge, you can drive from California to New York. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, that uh, I think they're going to suppress that. But it, it has a ripple effect. When uh, right now in the UK, there is a, what they're calling it, a cucumber crisis. Because the uh, hothouses that they have are heated with natural gas. Well, there's a shortage in natural gas. And so the farmers in January did not plant a crop. And so now it's, there's, there's no harvest at all. Yeah, it's easy to grow cucumbers on your own, though. Yeah, it I mean, is. They're, they're really easily and, grown. And looking at, uh, I mean, guys, this is something we need to look at. I've uh, One of the things that I thought was kind of neat is you can get those uh, five-gallon plastic pails, like you can pick them up at Walmart like you'd use to wash your car or whatever, and you can turn those into planters that are, are really good for growing tomatoes or growing a lot of things like that. And I think all of us are going to just have to pray through and see if we can have a little bit of green thumb Uh and of course, Mary's always so good at that. I just, if if she needs something, I'll, I'll move the dirt or build whatever she needs to build. But she's really good at that. Well, and uh, I believe it or not, growing up in the country, I should know a lot about gardening, but I didn't know anything. <laughs> I just, uh, I think my mom was um, just sick of gardening and sick of things like that when I was young, and so she didn't she didn't do much. And what little was done, I wasn't paying attention. Um, she was a forager. She would go out in the in the woods. I went with her, and we would pick greens and have one of the meals that we'd have would be like ham and beans and cornbread and then greens, just cooked greens. And she would season them. And when I was a kid, I thought they were horrible. And then when I got older, I just loved them. <laughs> and and <laughs> I'm, the way it works? I'm wishing that I had paid attention so I would know. And there are books that you can get now. But it's just a little easier on your mind if you have somebody show you so you don't pick up something that's going to poison you. But it was delicious. And so um, we do have morel mushrooms on our property. Oh, your we have your a lot dad was a hunting champion. I've never he seen was. anybody. He was. That, he could, uh, he would, he'd fill up sinks mm -hmm. with them. But, I mean, so we're foragers, and, and I'm planning on learning more about that. Um, I I knew that this was this was coming. There are things that are going to happen in this nation that have already been set in motion um, because there's judgment here. And God's mercy is very evident. I mean, it's been slow coming, and and what he's doing now is before big judgments come, he's exposing everything. You guys probably heard about Disney, you know, and what all they're doing. Well, this is just what Disney is. It's always been this way. And the uh, good news is, is there are... Millions of people that are going to be cutting that off. Yeah. They aren't going to let their kids watch this stuff. And, and if you can ever get the truth of one thing, then you'll start seeing it everywhere. You know, it, it's like a seed that's planted. And it starts to grow, and you'll, you'll see truth there. And then you'll look, and you'll say, well, look at this. Oh, look at this. And that's, that's what God's doing right now, is he is exposing uh, the evil, and especially that that has been covered up. And, you know, is a, is a, a hidden thing in something that looks good, that, may, that feels good. And, but Disney's been, I, well, it was in 1975. I went there on my senior trip, and like I've told you before, I don't remember a thing. Uh, passed when I went in the gate, and um, someone had asked me to buy a pair of Mickey Mouse shoes, and I, I don't know if that was probably a socks. trigger for me. or Yeah, socks. And um, I went and purchased that. I can even remember walking up what the stand looked like and purchasing those socks. And I don't remember another thing after that. And I wish you'd tell people there was a, like, um, Constantine, Constantine wire. wire at the top of the fence. And, and they'd say, there's no fence around Disney World. And so I think what I have is intermeshed memories of things where we were taken to. Um, I don't know if I was taken in some place in Disney World or if there was just a part of me that got triggered and went, and I, I've never retrieved the memories of, of any good thing. I think that there are a couple of things I remembered that were bad that happened um, maybe underground or somewhere else I was taken to, but I don't remember 
a ride. I don't remember anything. And that's not normal. No. You know, that was a big deal. That was the first time our our uh, school had ever went to Disney World was our year because always before they went to Washington, D.C. was their, their end-of-the-year trip, senior trip. And so, um, but it's it's all going to come out. And so what what God's doing is his mercy is holding back judgment. It's holding it back so that we can, his people and others can have time to see how horrible the situation is, how we've been deceived, so that we can pray and we can take action to change things. And I, I think we need to be praying because there's there's two things going on here, guys. There's the judgment of God, and I, I think we need to pray that it be surgical uh, because I think there's going to be a lot of things that people are going to declare that this is the judgment of God, and the truth is the elite have planned it to get uh-huh. rid of us and right, to bring right. us back under control. And so there's going to be a lot of things that they planned, that they orchestrated, while they made sure that they're being completely taken care of, uh, that they're going to pour out on society. You know, remember the uh, the Georgia Guidestones, they want to reduce us down to about $650 million to where we're more manageable. Uh, the... Um, Oh, what was his name? He was the um, prince over in uh, in in Great Britain that just recently passed away. That was married to the Queen of England, and his and when there was a children's book he authored. In the front of it, he said that uh, if he could come back as anything, he'd come back as a virus that would wipe out half the world. You know. Oh, that was the Queen's husband. Yeah, the Queen's husband. And uh, these these people are, are hell bent on this. I mean, they talk about it at Davos. They talk about a lot of different of the the round tables. And uh, I, I think they believe that this is a part of them pushing the world into such crisis that they, the entire world will run to a new one world order. Mm-hmm. And guys, you and I are already a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And this is why it's, it's so important as we, as we move ahead to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit and his prompting, whether it's to you know, plant a garden or, or, or do whatever it is that we're doing, or to deal with a certain issue in our life, God is, is working hard to orchestrate things for our good. And uh, sometimes, you know, I've always wondered, you know, if God's dealing with an issue with me, why, why are you dealing with that now? It seems like it's out of the blue. There was no um, precipitating thing that I can maybe put my finger on that, uh, that may have happened uh, that was even related to it. And Mary, every single time I found if I'm just faithful, I'll find out that, you know, six months or so later, uh, God has us go through something that I would have probably self-sabotaged if God had not dealt with that issue uh, months before. Well, that's kind of what, what we're talking about when we say God's in control. A lot of people are just upset about that, especially in the last year or so. I've heard people say, well, God, don't say God's in control because then that would mean he's a... He's doing all these horrible things, and that's that's not what I mean. I mean, if you're if you're saved, God is in control, and he, and he he's will in control be, of His kingdom, and He will be um, trying to get you free, trying to to get you to make the right decisions. He's in control, and he he can orchestrate and move things um, to those that are not in the kingdom. I believe he's he's constantly moving, trying to get them saved. You know, he's he's. Uh, to say he's not in control implies that he's not all powerful, but he doesn't micromanage things. He gave man free will, and a lot of what goes on is decisions we made. And boy, I made a, a ton of crazy decisions that I'm sure that he has done many things to keep me alive. To you know, over things I've done. And those situations cause us to end up with uh, what I call you know wandering, wandering Israeli syndrome that you end up wandering in the wilderness for a while because God's got to take you on this circuit to bring you right back to where you were, where you had, you had misstepped or you had rebelled. Mary, I remember years ago and I was just a kid and, and went down to silver dollar city and, and we went into the, the caverns, you know, underneath in, in a tour. And back then I was really scared of heights. I mean, it just, I, I had adrenaline pumping the entire time. Well, they had the one, uh, section after we went through that there was uh, just a regular guardrail and they should have had mesh or something on it because they had some smaller kids and this one little kid ran toward that rail because he wanted to see over and I mean it, he could have fallen off so easily 
and his dad's grabbing him, and he's fighting his dad while his dad is trying to save his life. And, and finally, the dad has to get real stern with him and then eventually says, if you're going to look at that, I'm going to have to hold you. And he showed him how dangerous it was. Mary, how many times has, has God been dealing with us about things? And we're, we're not understanding what he's dealing with. And we're like that kid that's fighting to, get, to run to danger while, while dad is, is trying to keep us out of danger because we don't understand where we're, we're, we've, we've not matured or we don't see the danger. Uh, the enemy has blinded our minds or perception to something. And that God is really working hard because we're in covenant with him to, to keep us in. And we're, the whole time we're fighting with him. And Mary, I think this is a season that God is saying, quit fighting and trust me. Just, well, and, and question. Yeah. You know, if things are going going wrong and you can't ever make it financially and things like that, that's that's when you can stop and, and start questioning what what's wrong. Because God promises in his word for his people that, that they're going to have their needs met abundantly. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of the things we kept questioning. We kept saying, man, what is going on? We couldn't make it. Uh, it, it, it didn't matter what we did. And, and all that time, I mean, God would sustain us. There were times, you know, that just money would show up and, and things would sustain us. But it was a constant struggle, constant health struggles. And it, it made us question, okay, why isn't the word working in our lives because everybody just said you know this you know this so a seed of faith everything was yeah. reduced to a seed of faith right. well uh, it didn't work and because of the stuff that was going on in our lives and god began to, sh- uh, to work on us to show us open doors we begin discovering both the power of covenant and the power of the commandments and how the commandments are related to covenant and i, I you know both of us can watch as as god lovingly took us down that journey that even in the midst of, of the occult coming after us, God began to supernaturally meet our needs. Well, we didn't even know how deep the trouble was. No, we know? didn't. And it's, uh, I've, I've kind of got such compassion for people these days because, you know, with the pandemic and everything that has happened, people are starting to wake up and they're looking around and saying, what's going on? They're questioning things. And it's really a good place to be, but it's also one of the most difficult things you'll, you'll walk through. Because you're going to want to get back to what you think is normal. You're going to want to, to get back to, I just want to get back to where we just go along. We get to go to the baseball games. We get to do what we want. But essentially what God's doing is he's, he's trying to get Egypt out of you. You know, yeah. you know here we are at Passover season, and we're, we're think, we go back and think about you know, that first Passover and how they had to put the blood over the doorpost, and then the death angel passed over him. It was protection. And um, it's, it's a time when God's showing everything, and it's going to be really hard for some people to handle it. Um, and I know, because when I first started seeing everything, it was just rocking my world over and over. And, and, and I was, you know, I'd prayed through to a place to where I'd get back to stability but I would see things, and, and, and it would be right in front of my eyes, and I'd think, God, this just can't be. This just can't be. And so there's going to be a lot of that going on as God reveals things. Um, you know, right now, across America, you would have to be really uninformed to not know that our president is in cognitive decline. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very obvious. It's very obvious that um, things are going wrong. Uh, it's very obvious that even people that voted for the current president, I think, would be questioning many things. Yeah, buyer's remorse. And so it's one of those times when, when God's just slowly, as you can take it, revealing what's there. How deep is it going to go? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. <laughs> but but as, if a person can start looking slowly and just get themselves prepared, you can handle it. You can handle it. Yeah, you can. And, you know, the... Think about when they came out of Egypt, Mike. They had to be used to seeing occult activity all the time. All the time. All the time. And so, so that kind of messed them up, you know. It was, God, a part of the, it was a part of the very culture that they were surrounded by. And so God miraculously delivers them, shows them that, you know, even when Pharaoh decided, hey, I'm coming after you, God stops them with the miraculous events. 
but they still had a lot of Egypt in them. And so, so they're, they find themselves wandering around in the wilderness. Well, it, we're in a worse situation than they were wandering in the wilderness. Yeah. Because what we're in right now is a more accurate description would be we're wandering in a, a construct maze to keep you controlled. You just don't know it. You can't see it with your eyes. You know, one of the things, the whole, and I had to write this down because this really sounds like a good sermon title. But as, as you were talking, the Holy Spirit said, you know, when people want normalcy, I'm going to go back to normal. Well, for a lot of people, Mary, their normal is sleepwalking in Egypt. Mm-hmm. That's, that's right. Just sleepwalking in Egypt. That's they they, they have, don't have a clue what's going on. They have enough things to placate uh, their flesh and what they, they want to do. But they don't realize that the entire system uh, you can go back to, um, uh, if you can f- find it on Amazon, I, I got a, 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 a Kindle version of it for probably about 2 or $3. It was a book called The New World Order, and it was written by H.G. Wells. And one of the things that H.G. Wells po- postulated, and this was a time that uh, after you got, you know, 13, 14 years old, nobody played sports. It was, th- this was something that was, you know, for kids, whether it was baseball or or football, soccer, whatever. And one of the things that he postulated to move things toward a new world order was to create something called organized sports where there would be great coliseums and it would create tribalism uh, among uh, the people for their teams. And, and it would be adults playing and the adults would get so involved in it that they would be absolutely clueless to what their leaders were doing and what the world was doing. Everything was based upon uh, that. And that was, there's, I mean, there's many other things that he postulated in there that the elite have literally picked up and they have carried forth uh, with what they're doing. Uh, we are literally living in a matrix of control. It is. Well, everything. I'm, as I was praying, God had told me that, um, that there's, Whatever this construct in the, is that's been built around us, um, it it's just got got a way of just like you said, making you sleepwalk. Yeah, it, you're you're um, you're not hyper aware of things. It it's got a way of shutting down your discernment, shutting down your alertness. Uh, you know, look how many stimulants we have to have coffee in the morning to get awake. I mean. There's so many things that we have to just try to yeah. keep going because, and God said that he told me this morning he's releasing um, something from heaven that is going to tear down the technological part of that. There's a, there's a technology involved in this, and so God's releasing something that's so we can expect to see more people waking up. We can expect to see... Uh, more things revealed. He's releasing something. I, he's already been exposing things, but this is something new he's releasing. Yeah. And and so then we're not going to be so desensitized to everything. We're going to be. We're going to start. Our awareness is going to pick up. We're gonna. We're gonna see more. And and you had said this yesterday when we were talking that we need to be in expectation of God stopping Pharaoh. Yeah. And guys, why why this is so important? When you look back at the. Uh, many of the legends and myths about Nimrod, uh, there are those that believe that Nimrod was also the first pharaoh over Egypt, okay? So that, he, that entire pharaoh system leads back to Nimrod, who will come back as the son of perdition. So he'll end up being the pharaoh of the world, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, then you look at uh, many of the, the pharaoh line, because this, this kind of ties into even with, with Nimrod, many of the pharaoh line believe that they are descendants of nephilim okay antediluvian age nephilim many of the world leaders to include many of our presidents especially of of late that you can trace their bloodlines and many of the royal bloodlines of europe and and you can trace them back many have already done this to the pharaoh line in egypt and so passover becomes really prophetically important when you realize that this whole move toward a new world order is to establish a pharaoh system to where there is going to be a pharaoh who 
believes that he is that he has achieved deity, which is what the Antichrist says. I mean, it, it all fits together. And when if, if God would open our eyes for us to understand that they have put a veneer over the top of every nation, that they're, they're, they're installing this Pharaoh system, and they, they have been working on it, uh, I think, well, well from the turn of the 20th century. They have been working on it. They've been using watcher technology. Uh, that our media is so controlled. You know, there was uh, recently I read a report. There was one guy that, do you remember the, the guy that was working with uh, uh, oh, uh, O'Keefe that did the whole thing on Planned Parenthood? That, I mean, 30 months, Mary, he was involved in undercover work to show how that they were violating federal law, okay? That man should have got a Pulitzer for his work. Instead, he got a SWAT raid on his home. Because it went against the matrix. It went against this this Pharaoh system. And I, I think they're using abortion and a lot of different things as a way of spiritually empowering oh, I know they this are. very thing. That That's why God needs to shake it. But we're a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And God is transitioning us from the Pharaoh system into the system that is the kingdom of God so that we can be free of it even because there's really no place on planet earth that you can go that this pharaoh system has not already been established to one degree or another it doesn't mm-hmm. matter what nation that you go into it's there yeah. but we are a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken that it doesn't matter if you're uh if you're a, a, a citizen of china of russia of europe of south america of africa canada or, or america the day that you're born again, you have been made a citizen of the kingdom of God by the completed work of Messiah. Because of that, you hold dual citizenship. But part of what I think God is trying to move us to, Mary, is our primary citizenship must be the kingdom of God. Absolutely. And our secondary citizenship than whatever country and that's what empowered daniel even daniel became president of mm-hmm. babylon his primary citizenship was israel that's right and he remained true to the god of israel and, and he favor made, even in and, and had favor in in all of that hellacious mess daniel had supernatural favor with god mm-hmm. and and daniel uh, because Daniel prophesied so much of the times in which we're living in, he also serves as a template to show us how to walk in dual citizenship mm-hmm. so that if there were laws in the land that contradicted what he was instructed to do from God, he did what God said. Yeah, that's it, and that's what we've got to do. You, that's what we've got to do. You made the statement um, that once God sets you free of your taskmasters, are you ready to live without them? Because big adjustment. I mean, we we went through one adjustment after another when we started coming yeah. out of everything. Well, there's the there's the tyranny of the familiar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go into unfamiliar territory, so you want to gravitate back to that which you already knew. Uh, it's, it's, sometimes you it gives feel us safe ex- there. Um, it gives us sometimes excuses for things we don't want to deal with too. You feel safe, but it's really not safe. The reason you feel safe is is internally, especially if you've been a victim of abuse or any of the, or mind control in the maximized way, um, your safety depends on you not looking at anything. Yeah. Don't don't look, don't speak, just act like it's not there. You leave them alone and they'll leave you alone. That's that's the way. And so when somebody does start getting awake, it's it's gonna rile up the feathers of the people that don't want to be awakened. They're just going to say, just shut up. I don't want to hear it. I, I just want to keep things the way they are. But but it's they're in a kingdom that is going down. Yeah. And and they're you know that's that's the way most Christians are, Mike. Is though they're dual they're dual citizens of the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. They got they got their one foot on the right side and the other because because they've been either knowingly done some things that wrong or unknowingly. And that that was one of the things that that God spoke to me this week and. Um, I never, never even thought about this in years. I don't think I made one, but he was telling me that the dangers of a pinky swear 
You guys ever heard of that, where people take their pinkies and join it? And I've seen it, like on a movie or something, and then you, you swear an oath. It's usually little kids now that are doing it well, rather than adults. But I yeah. looked it up, and supposedly it's it came from the Japanese mafia. It implies that if you break something as holy as a pinky promise, you have to cut off your fingers punishment. Um, and this says this comes as no surprise since the Japanese elite group is known for its loyalty practices. Um, and so... I started thinking about that because God was was telling me, you know, as we're coming up to Passover, I always look at Passover as, as um, you know, I always, there's a grieving for me because you have to look at the cross. Yeah. And what Jesus did. It's so horrible what he had to go through. But but on the other side of it, man, there's victory. And you, and you get, get past the grieving and you go to the victory and his love, his awesome love that he had that he was willing to, to go through that pain and agony for us. You and, know, and, and I need to stop right there. And, and uh, this week uh, we were thinking about these things and, and I was in the house and I mean, God just spoke to me. And, you know, a lot of times you'll hear people in an altar call, you know, salvation is free. It's, it's, it's a free gift of salvation. Well, it's free on your end, but don't ever call salvation free. Not when you look at the lamb and not when you look at heaven gave everything. The creator, the one that we wronged. You see, the hands that were nailed were the hands that formed Adam out of the clay. The feet that were nailed were the ones that used to walk with him in the garden. The creator. The Bible says everything that was made, that could be made, was made by him, and it was made for him. The creator, the one that was wronged, he was the, he was the person that, that in, in the divine court of law, he's the one who was wronged. He was the injured party because Adam and Eve broke covenant, and man rebelled against the creator. And he warned them. He said, listen. If you, if you violate this, if you eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it'll bring death. Death is the penalty. The Bible says that what is the penalty of sin? It's death. Mm-hmm. And so there had to be a death. And God is the creator. The judge looked at us and said, I cannot bear the fact that you have got to bear the sentence of your own guilt. And I'm going to come, and I'm going to bear it for you. And so he took on human flesh, dwelt among us, became that perfect lamb that hung on the cross, bore all of our sin, of sin of everyone who has ever lived or who will ever live in the future, at that one moment. Mary, what a what a what a horrible price to the one that was the one that was hurt bore the price of the crime that was committed so that we could be free. You see, salvation is not free. It may be free on our side, but it wasn't on God's. No, it was. And guys, because I, I think that we have almost preached a socialistic version of salvation that has caused us to cheapen salvation. It's the greatest gift in the universe. The greatest privilege, now we're, we're getting ready to enter into to Passover. The greatest privilege that we have is to be able to put the blood over the doorpost. That is an honor. That is, that, is, that is something that is rarefied. That the Holy Spirit, we're, we're entering into a prophetic season where the Holy Spirit is saying, listen, whatever's going on in your life, I've got the cure. And it always starts with the blood. That's true. It always starts with the blood. We cannot pass out of Egypt 
until God's judgment passes over us because of the blood. Well, and that's that's what he was reminding me of because I was I was thinking, you know, this is such a time um, to have a new start. You know, you may have things that in your life that took you in a bad direction, decisions you made, things that happened, and um, I was I was thinking how many things that we can be yoked to, Mike. That even though we have that that new start, there can still be a place where Satan can work. And so, the reason that I looked up the pinky swears, I thought, well, God doesn't show me something like that for no reason. And so, I wanted to compare it to um, remember when we talked about on Halloween, the origin of the dunking for the apples yeah. was because they were given uh, the Druids gave them an option of. Um, was it go go in the wicker man? Is that the thing they or, or where try they'd be to burned survive by or, dunking for, or survive uh, dunking for apples in boiling cider? In which case, you know, if they if they made it through it, they would be permanently scarred their face and uh, and, they and usually so, mostly they died afterward if they even tried. And what I've seen over the last almost thirty years as I've watched all this is kids that participate in that. Um, will have accidents that harm their face. It's like it's like whatever that was back then, the horrors of that, Satan tries to, to use that door because that's a, an occultic practice to do that again. So when I was thinking about this pinky swear, I thought, well, that would be just how he would do that because that would be, um, you know, you've got an occult thing going on there. That's That's something of the kingdom of darkness. And so then he would probably try to take the finger. Yeah, I mean that's that's just how he does things. He's so awful. I, I think one of the things God is saying too, we we need to make sure that we become covenant sensitive, and we need to look at any other covenants that we have made, and to nullify them by the blood of Jesus. And that's what I wanted to bring up is, yeah. is just mention some things that maybe people haven't thought about. I have never thought about that pinky swear. You know, my kids didn't dunk for apples because I. I was thinking, you got all these people in there, runny noses and everything. My kids aren't going to go in a thing of water where all these kids have, have dunked for apples. So so we stayed away from that, praise God. Uh, but these are things that you would, would, I would never even think of something like that. You know, these are just things like I've, I've seen kids do things like that. Um, and you probably have seen people like make blood brother covenants. You know, there's the mafia Mm-hmm. They'll they'll cut themselves and make a blood covenant, blood oath, and that they never reveal the things. Yeah, spit they, in the hand and shake. And, and that's a, that's a uh, I looked that up, and that's just a milder version of the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you're combining DNA there, and so these would make ungodly connections that Satan's no doubt going to use. You know, if you've ever been, there's a lot of people been delivered out of um, gangs. They go through things like that. And so those are the type of things that, that we, we can be saved. You know, we can get our soul saved, but there's a strand that's not been cut off. And it could be, it could be something that the kingdom of darkness has just got a spirit hovering there around you, just try, trying to attack you. And I think that that goes on a lot. I mean, um, I've, I've seen it through the years. You know, it's the same thing, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's probably not going to go over so well either. <laughs> you know how we've always talked about the Masonic origin. If you've got any group, anything that goes back and is connected in any way to Freemasonry, it is a connection that Satan will use. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's definitely the connection between the Freemasons and the Boy Scouts. And, and it also says here the Girl Guides. I, I wasn't able before now to go ahead and connect the Girl Scouts to it. Um, but Lord Baden-Powell, although there's no record and his family said that he wasn't, they, had, they have um, lodges named after him. His, I think his brother was a Freemason, so he was obviously tied close enough to it as one of the originators of Boy Scouts that there's a yoke there. Uh, then, of course, Daniel Beard was a Freemason. It was the one that, that was uh, founded it here in the United States. And so there's the definite tie to that. And so, you know, I, you start thinking about, look at all of the sexual abuse that's gone on 
within the Boy Scout camps and things. And so, so you can see the connection. So I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you one that I think is worth praying over. Um, we knew someone that was going to join the Royal Rangers in the Assembly of God. Uh, and I always thought, I mean, I went to an Assembly of God when I was in my teens. I loved it. And, and I knew all the, I didn't join any of the things they had, but, but I knew that they had the Royal Rangers there and everything. So I looked up, because of that, I was, I was feeling torment. And when I feel like that unsettled, I know there's something I need to pray about. So I just started looking, you know, on the origin of it. And the, it was a, a, a preacher that started that. And when you read down through, it says, uh, it says that he based it on the same things as the, as the Boy Scouts. And so that might be something that you need to pray over. Uh, and I love the Assembly of God churches, but, you know, they, they generally will tell people not to join Freemasonry. So would that not be like Satan to try to to weasel in somehow? And I, I even noticed on that man's uh, um, tombstone that there was a phallic symbol there. Uh, that would be like Satan so angry at them for trying to warn people about Freemasonry that he would try to slide something in. So just just a thought for prayer that if you have your children in, in the Royal Rangers... Um, that's that's a point for prayer. If 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 there if it looks like that there's there's uncanny accidents or things just going wrong because, you know I've looked at a lot of the the people that were in Royal Rangers that I've known through the years, Mike. They've had devastating things happen, and so and that's how Satan does things. He sneaks it in. Um, I'm sure that that man that did this had a good heart and wanted there to be a, a good organization for the kids in church. You know, I, I don't have any doubt about that. But but it's just if Satan can slide something together. So so since it was patterned after that, you might pray to make sure that there's not a yoke there. Yeah. Because that's what Satan loves to do. He loves to slide something in so that he can he can have a point of attack. And he especially likes to go after the young ones. You know, an assembly of God is is in my heart. <clears throat> you know, I I got a real baptism of the Holy Spirit there. There was a, um, I've told you there was a evangelist that came through and and he just walked up to me after the sermon and he said, "You need more of God." He said, "Do you want it?" And I shook my head, yes. And uh, he laid his hand on my head, and my arms went straight up, and I started crying and praying in an unknown tongue. <laughs> Not really even knowing what it was. I didn't. I had, they explained it to me. But if I hadn't had that, I don't know what would have happened. <clears throat> I resisted going. I had a friend that kept inviting me to church, inviting me to church, and I just resisted, resisted. So finally, uh, one of my cousins had married uh, someone that went to that church, and, and they had a fill the pew night. <laughs> and so she invited me to come. And so I went, and... Uh, life-changing event yeah and so uh, the thought that they could use this against those kids infuriates me <clears throat> but i believe that prayer can break it if you know and i'm just putting this out there <clears throat> if there's anybody that that's that's struggling maybe a family struggling in the assembly of god and um it would just it's just worth praying over and you know things like pinky swears there are so many things mike that that we can that are connected to things we don't even know where they came from you know there's so many things that that i've had to change in my life just the way i say things uh, because taking satan will take your words and try to use them against you you know stupid phrases like this is killing me or something you know i don't say that anymore or works like a charm yeah, all yeah. kinds of stu- and especially in the Ozarks. Is embedded I mean, into our culture and our language. There's there's so many things that we say and we don't even know where they came from. Um, I guess every place does that, but it's just it's just things that are worth praying over. <laughs> because because it is God's will that we be in health. It is God's will uh, that we have our needs met. Yes. And and it was us questioning those things over and over that at least paved the way for God to show us these things. And uh, the prophetic season of, of Passover 
is getting ready to get free from Pharaoh. And his strings are many, guys. His strings are many. You know, there were um, king, good kings in Judah that their life was cut short. They were taken down because they made what looked like real good business deals with other nations that created a covenant or created a link with them that uh, was not good. And they ended up, Josiah, I think, was one of the ones that did it, if I'm remembering right, that he made he made a deal with merchants or it may have been another one of the kings. I'm, mm, I don't think it was Josiah. I don't think it was Josiah, but there was another king that was a good king. And he made, it looked like a real good deal for, for Judah that he made. He made this thing with the, with the, the merchant ships and, and stuff, but he didn't really inquire of God. And, and his, his tenure as king was cut short because of it. Guys, and we're, we're entering into a period that we need to be careful who we're coming into agreement with. We need to be careful of any covenants that we're making mm-hmm. and, and, to, and to make sure that we're, we take very seriously our covenant with God because God <clears> is <throat> trying to take us out of Egypt, but there has been a tapestry roving around us in the very culture and society in which we live that is building toward the Pharaoh's one world government control. And God wants to set us free of that. And what I, th- I think what we're going to find is there's going to be a whole lot of strings in our life that are still connected to the stuff that we didn't realize. Mm-hmm. That the Holy Spirit's going to begin turning the light on it and said, you need to put the blood of Jesus over that. You need to, you need to renounce this or you need to break the power of this. And, uh, because God wants every single one of us to be completely free. That's right. When we, because I, I think in, in the days ahead, we're going to come to that crossing the Jordan moment. And what God is wanting is to, for us to be like a Joshua or a Caleb. <clears throat> yeah, there may be giants over there, but I'm going to show you how to take them down because I serve the God who brought down Egypt. I serve the God who set me free. Well, and that's part of the reason that we keep saying everything that we can think of that is something that we can pray and break because this, these things are easily broken. Yeah. You know, you can just say, Father, forgive me for any uh, oath or um, swearing that I've done, and I plead the blood of Jesus over that. I ask you to sever it by the sword of the Spirit, and I command any spirits that have ever attached to me, to our family, to go. You have to go in Jesus' name. It's, it's easily broken. The way that Satan does it is in darkness. You don't even know it's there. You don't know that there's something hovering that has a right. Um, and, and he'll take the smallest thing and try to do something. Because there's something about the generations that are alive right now that Satan's been working overtime to try to yoke them so he can try to destroy them. Trying to yoke them, trying to put this in their life, trying to do this. Um, because he's worried. He knows that God's getting ready to raise people up, and we're getting ready to see things like we have never seen. The power of God flowing through people. It's going to be those the, the kind like we've had a couple of times in our lives, Mike, where the power of God is so strong on us that we could barely stand. Yeah. That it, it's so powerful that the human body has a hard time maintaining. That's going to increase. So we have to get ourselves prepared so we can hold it. You know, I've, um, I noticed this. I read it one time, and then I know I started watching. And a lot of the people, um, the woman that crawled in my van had a family member that I, I went to school with them. And they looked like, as they got older, they just kept getting taller. And they expanded. I mean, the, I, and you know I'm overweight. I'm not trying to say anything about somebody overweight, but their, their weight increased to such a degree that it was, it was noticeable. And it was like they expanded taller and wider. And I had read that sometimes people in the occult will expand, try to expand their body mass so that they can hold a bigger entity. And, and I'm telling you, it's, it's something only by God's power can, can we handle the power of God. Oh, yeah. I mean, it takes supernatural strength for us to be able to stand up you know, and look, look in the Bible with examples of just when an angel show up, man, they'd hit the ground. The power of God is so great, and I don't think we've seen an inkling of it, and I think we're getting ready to, and I think what God has prepared, that why you're born, 
why you were born for this time is you were born to move in this power. And so what's Satan going to do? He's got some kind of foreknowledge of it. Maybe it's the angels that are around these generations. Maybe it, some way he can see. And so he's going, i got to yoke them. i got to put something in their life that is going to stop their spiritual growth. i got to put something in their life that's going to make them turn against God because they don't understand. You know, and one of the couple of things I'm kind of seeing in the spirit right now is that uh, the kingdom of darkness, one of the reasons they're doing everything they're doing, it's an act of desperation. I believe that. Because a lot of the remnant have already been working on their lives. Mm-hmm. And you're saying, well, Mike and Mary, it's like you're almost getting down to the minutia on what you're doing. Well, imagine that you used to have these huge ropes that the Pharaoh had you tied, tied down and, and God's been sending you free. You're down to one thread and the enemy's desperate because if you'd ever break free of that one thread and you are completely 100% free, the power of God can move through you in ways that you could only dream of. And he is scared to death that the Holy Spirit's going to show you those threads that are left for them to be broken. That is stopping you from achieving what you know in your spirit that you can walk in. Well, and, and look at, at from where we came from, Mike. If God hadn't been so merciful to us and show us things to change... The, the spiritual warfare we were in, we'd have been grease spots. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing podcasts. We'd already, people would be saying, you know, Mike and Mary, I just wonder what happened to them. They just, I, I, I guess they passed away or whatever. Because I, I mean, it's when you, when you go in spiritual warfare on the level that soon everyone's going to be in, we're going to have a decision to make. We're either going to lay back and just say, okay, they're just going to take us over and and we're not going to own anything and we're going to like it and everybody's just going to sit in a room and and watch video games. That's where they want you to go or Mm -hmm. be dead. And so we've either got to say, okay, we're just going to go with the flow. Jesus is going to come back soon anyway, or we're going to fight this. I was born to fight this, and everything they did to me to strengthen me, God's taken and used. Absolutely. And he can strengthen anybody. He, you don't have to go through things to have strength. There can just be a supernatural inflow of God's power, you know? And so, so we've got to make that decision. We're not going to stay in, in Pharaoh's court. We're not going to stay over here in, this, the, in the nation they've created because it didn't start out this way. No. It's not God's plan. I believe we're supposed to be a sheep nation f- for to show forth God's power to the world so that when the Antichrist gets set up, people have a, a place that they can look at and say, now see, we can see the power of God moving. There is hope. There is hope. And I think, we're Mary, we're on the brink of probably one of the greatest revivals that we've ever seen in history. I believe it. I, there's a reason we're going in this conference center. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why God has been just raising up prophets and, and getting in our business and all these different things is God has been preparing us. The very reason that you are yearning to see the power of God, the very reason you're yearning to be being used by God is because the Holy Spirit is breathing that yearning into you so that you start getting free. You start looking for anything in your life that's holding you back and getting rid of it breaking its power by what you have in covenant, by the blood, by the name, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're breaking those things. You're Mm -hmm. tearing Egypt off of you. Well, and and for God to specifically speak to me about a pinky swear, there's some of you listening that's made them. Yeah. So we just ask God to forgive that. Father, it was unknowing that they they made any any, uh, oath, any swearing. And, Father, we just cover that with the blood of Jesus right now. Yes. Breaking the power of that thing. And, spirits, you can't hold on any longer. It's no. covered by the blood of Jesus. Your power is broken, and you have to go now. Yes. In Jesus' name. And we're going to walk the way of the word that we're going to let our yeses be yeses and our noes be no. And our word is what we keep. Now, Father, we just ask right now that the Holy Spirit would go to work in a supernatural way. Father, as we're, we're moving toward Passover, Father, help us get ready to get yes, free of Pharaoh. help us, Father. Let us have an expectation of absolute, complete, and utter freedom from Pharaoh, and that when we cross over the Red Sea, we will never have a yearning to go back, but only to go forward in you. There may be a Mount Sinai that we got to deal with. There may be 
the River Jordan that we got to deal with. There may be giants that we got to deal with. But with you, Father. But what Israel discovered can do it. is the same God that took down Egypt can take down giants. And Father, we thank you thank for you every Lord. every remnant member that listens to this. Father, I ask that you would empower them. Father, that you would give them wisdom. Father, that you would loose a fresh anointing on the inside of them. Father, for them to not only to see any connections the enemy still has to their lives, but Father, begin giving them vision for their kingdom connections and what's in store ahead. Father, let us be a people that are prepared, that are prayed up, that are studied up, and that are trained up to do what you have called us to do in the days ahead. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.